Hey guys, welcome back to another evil squishy makeover. I'm really starting to get the hang of these. I feel like I'm making some improvement. As we're officially at the end of summer now, I figured I should have one last hurrah. Just a little barbecue pool party with my squishies. That's what I do in my free time, in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, it's a mildly miserable time. Don't stare too much at the furniture. I'm saving that for a special episode. Not that today isn't special. They're all special in their own way. Um, yeah. Let's see what we have here today. A baking bear. Looks pretty baked. There's a pale bunny having an existential crisis. I know that look. Reminds me of the existential crisis frog. And also this unicorn donut. Lots of unicorns around the dark side lately. Yay. First things first, the usual prep work. Sanding block is back from vacation. Get back to work. There, that should help the paint stick better. He's not gonna be staying a bear, but he is gonna still be a chef. Well, actually, I should say he's still gonna be a practitioner of the culinary arts. Butcher. He's a butcher. Do butchers wear those fancy hats? I guess not. No. But he's having guests over for his pool party and he'll be in charge of the barbecue. He's actually kind of the host. It's a big deal. So yeah, he's dressed for the occasion, although not completely ready for the occasion, because he's still midway through making a poop. That's Ew. unhygienic. Descustan. I'll help you out there, buddy. Three generous donations to the Squishy Amputations box. You're too kind. Anyways, life is like karma. What you let out, thou shall receive. And since he donated some ears, he'll be getting some ears in return, of course. What? There's been an accidental change of scenery. The background magically changed from purple to pink. I didn't mean to, I just forgot what color I was using. Normally I don't remember which body parts belong to who, but these ones are hard to forget. They're velvet. They're not normal squishy material, so they stand out a bit. I switched up the ears to make him look more like a pig. He's going to become the cannibal pig. Today was a real turning point in my squishy makeover journey. I discovered some things that I should have already discovered a long time ago. It's fine. Better late than than never. You might remember I did a squishy makeover collab with So Craftastic a while ago. She used this one type of fabric paint called soft matte, key word being soft. Soft white fabric paint that I've had for many, many years. Soft white fabric paint. I've used normal matte paint and I personally hate it. Delete that, that was cringe. The normal matte paint looks just like the slick paint bottle. You'd think they go together, but no. Avoid the normal matte paint. Instead, buy the weird looking blob bottle that's a few dollars more. Another reason why I didn't get the soft matte paint originally. But trust me, this makes a big difference. She recommended I try the soft matte paint, and I finally got my hands on some. It's been a game changer. I am no longer the same person I was yesterday. So many people have told me to use matte paint, credit where credit's due, but you guys never mentioned it was soft matte paint. Trust me, there's a huge difference. So yeah, painting the squishies white actually didn't take as long this time. A million thank yous to So Craftastic. I already feel like he's looking a lot like a pig, except for pigs aren't white, so I'll be painting him a nice, dull pink color. I would have picked out a bright pink instead, something that catches the eye, keeps your attention, but he's not a hog. I did all the colored layers and only slick paint, which is fine, but next time I'll definitely be mixing the soft matte paint. Just to make the paint a little less transparent and make the layering process go a bit quicker and less <laughs> agonizing. <laughs>
Turns out the camera wasn't running when I painted on the apron, so the apron just kind of magically appears. Whoops. It's fine, it's fine. That's okay, that's okay. I thought I turned on the camera for this part, but I guess not. I don't leave the camera on the whole time because it takes a long time to paint squishies. I'd have to go through multiple days of footage. It would take way too long and frankly would be kinda boring. So I just film the parts I wanna show when I remember to turn on the camera. Anyways, I kept the nose, just painted it a few shades darker. He's a pig, so he didn't require much of a nose job. The eyes, on the other hand, are being moved up a little. The cannibal pig doesn't have such a smushed face. I sketched out where I wanted everything to be and then went over it with paint. He's got some brown spots on him. It may look like dirt or chocolate or, uh, poopy, poopy. But yeah, it's not. It's his birthmarks. Oh. He's looking a little dead inside with his black, soulless eyes. I'll come back to that. I added some darker outlines to things to help clean up the edges and make things stand out a bit more and whatnot. He's holding a platter full of, I don't know what, I think it was cake. But the cannibal pig doesn't eat cake because, well, he's a cannibal, hence the name. I painted the platter white, but it was blending in with his apron too much, so I went over it with gray. Much better. I added some black to the ends of his arms and legs to give off the appearance of hooves. Not sure if it was looking like hooves yet, so I added some white shines. That'll do it. Also, some shines to his eyes and nose. I felt it was necessary. Now back to the cake. It's not looking very appetizing right now. Not that it will afterwards, but nonetheless. I'm working on it. I'm trying to turn this pink sludge into a crispy piglet. It's fine. It's just bacon. I thought some puffy paint could help me pull off the look. What have I done? I then dripped some blood splatters everywhere, since not only is he the chef, but also the butcher. In fact, he was even the hunter. My man's a jack of all trades. The piglet is looking a little roasted. In fact, he looks like he's bubbling from the inside. The oil might have gotten a bit too hot, but I don't question the cannibal pig's methods. He's been doing this a long time. The piglet doesn't look complete. Something felt missing, so I added a little tail. It honestly just kind of looks like I made the blob bigger. At this point, <laughs> the piglet's a lost cause. You'll soon realize he's not the only lost cause in this video. I then added a little knot to the cannibal pig's apron. Wouldn't want that coming undone. Trust me. Okay, next up is the existential crisis bunny. You might be wondering why he's having an existential crisis. Well, you're about to see the crisis unfold. What's a bunny doing at a barbecue anyway? Someone's gotta be the food. Rabbit stew for everyone. No, I'm just messing. I would never. Plus, we've already got bacon. And bacon and stew just don't go together. It's your lucky day. Not really. The bunny's just hanging out at the pool. It's a barbecue pool party. If you're new here and you'd rather not be barbecued alive today, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. If you thought the piglet was bad, wait till you see what's in store for this one. I introduced Flopsy to the unicorn donut. Say hi to your new best friend that you're gonna be glued to forever. Figured this would be a nice bonding experience. I roughed them up a bit to help the paint stick better, and then chopped off the unicorn donut's horn and ears. He's no longer a unicorn donut, just a regular donut. In fact, he's not even a donut anymore. You've been demoted. His new profession is pool floaty. Turns out Flopsy ate a little too many piglets at the barbecue, so she doesn't fit into the pool floaty. Hence, I chopped off a few pounds to help her squeeze in there. Trust me, it's gonna work. Just suck in your belly. I did keep her hands mostly intact. I didn't want it to look like she's in the floaty against her will. She's having fun. It's a good time. She needed some encouragement to stay in there. The hot glue definitely helped them both bond. Safe to say Flopsy's not going anywhere anytime soon. She's already pretty white, but I'm just going over everything with some white soft matte paint so I could just have a blank slate. Take a good look at her. You should try to remember her as she was. Things only go downhill from this point forward. I've been working on my squishy makeovers, really been trying to improve with time. Hopefully that shows. Sometimes things still don't go as planned. Now and then I run into a few casualties. Life is unpredictable that way. I mixed up a nice purple for Flopsy. It's my favorite color. I don't use it too much, but I felt Flopsy would look good in it. Flopsy really let me down. 
I even mixed up a nice bright pink for the floaty. Here's the first thing that went wrong. Flopsy's ears are kinda floppy. They dangle. I can't think of another word to describe it in the moment. The whole process is too frustrating and my brain has stopped working. So like I was saying, the ears dangle onto the floaty. Fabric paint is tacky. It sticks to everything, especially to itself. The ears kept sticking to the floaty and peeling off some of the paint. I almost considered chopping them off entirely and making a zombie bunny, but I've already made a zombie bunny, so I didn't want to. I just persevered and let my imagination run wild. And man, it really ran wild this time. I sketched out what I wanted her to look like. I thought I had this vision in my head. Sometimes things just look better in my imagination. They're not meant to be brought to life. This is one of those times. I gave her some wrinkles. Entirely my fault, not hers. She was supposed to look scary, not aged. Then I further wrecked her face with two little black dots. Nostrils? They're supposed to be nostrils. I gave her a straight face. She's very tight-lipped about the whole procedure. Green eyes are pretty, right? I'll give her some green eyes to bring out her inner beauty. At this point, I knew there was no turning back. We have to go all out, Flopsy. She's no longer a bunny. I've made a monster. I should have just said I'm making a monster today. At least that way I could say I accomplished what I set out to do. You might think she has the chicken pox, but no. They're actually pus-filled boils. Yum. And by the looks of it, she's tasted a few of them. She might look like she's dying, which is a fair assumption. She may as well be dead after this makeover, or at least she's dead to me. You know what? Her boils aren't popping enough, so let's add some definition to them. Maybe some more boils could save this. You know what all these boils remind me of? Polka dots. So I threw some of those around the floaty, really tied the theme together. I just kept adding more and more. At this point, I went off the rails. Flopsy's a lost cause and I've come to terms with it. I'm not trying to save her. I'm just having fun now. Even threw on some sunglasses to help hide her face. Just so we're clear, Flopsy's not named Flopsy just because her ears flop. She's actually named Flopsy because she was a complete flop. Oh my god! Get it away from me! What a nightmare! Click on the top right or bottom left to get away from Flopsy!